Snapdragons are a common sight in garden borders or cut flower patches, but their colourful appearance and tough sounding name hides a fatal weakness. Stay on this video to understand this weakness and what to do about it. Snapdragons, also known by their Latin name, Antirrhinum magus, are called snapdragons because of their fascinating dragon head flowers. These flowers open and close when you squeeze them. Never ending fun for kids. No wonder these colourful flowers are a fun family favourite until they catch a disease. Here's the fatal flaw of snapdragon flowers, their susceptibility to the Antirrhinum rust fungus, also known by its Latin name, Puccinia antirrhini. When does infection happen? Infection occurs when the weather has been wet and the temperature has stayed roughly between 15 to 25 degrees Celsius. Of course, in the UK, it can be wet and mild most of the year. The Antirrhinum rust fungus was first discovered in 1895 in America, but it wasn't until 1933 that it journeyed across the Atlantic Ocean and turned up in England. Unfortunately for all of us, the fungus is now widespread in much of Europe and other countries around the world. So, let's take a look at the symptoms of Antirrhinum rust fungus infection. At first glance, it doesn't look like there's much wrong with these snapdragon plants. But if you look closely, you can see the first warning sign of infection, these small yellow patches on the upper side of the leaves. However, these yellow areas are easy to miss. It's only when I turn a leaf over that you suddenly see the full extent of the antirrhinum rust fungus infection. Look what's happened. The underside of the infected leaves are covered in numerous small orange-brown dusty pustules. Ugly or fascinating? You decide. When antirrhinum rust fungus infection is severe, you can even find these pustules on the stems of the plant. The initial infection of antirrhinum rust fungus on a snapdragon is most likely to occur from a spore carried by the wind. When this wind-blown spore lands on a wet leaf, and the temperature is between 15 to 25 degrees Celsius, like we said earlier, the fungal spore germinates and infects the snapdragon leaf. At first, the infection presents itself as a solitary, single brown pustule, which grows at ground zero, the site of the initial infection point from the antirrhinum rust fungus spore. Then, as the antirrhinum rust fungus grows outwards within the snapdragon plant tissue, you can see concentric, circular target patterns of pustules developing around that initial infection point. As we look at the underside of the whole plant here, we can see that the antirrhinum rust fungus has infected almost all of the lower leaves on this plant. We can even see here a small number of rust pustules on these flower buds. Although the rust fungus does not infect the snapdragon seeds themselves within the seed pods, the seeds can become easily contaminated. This means, somewhat scarily, that the seeds can act as a carrier for infection if you're collecting the seeds from infected plants. So, to make sure you're not inheriting problems, only collect snapdragon seed from fully healthy plants. Or, try to buy your snapdragon seeds from reputable sources, like a well-established garden centre. So, what action should you take and, can you prevent infection from occurring again on your snapdragon plants in the future years? In short, yes. Here, I'm going to outline five simple, organic steps to protect your snapdragon plants and control the antirrhinum rust fungus. Step 1. Snapdragons are popular commercial cut flowers. This means that plant breeders have invested time and effort to develop cultivars that are resistant to the antirrhinum rust fungus. Good news for home gardeners. These rust-resistant cultivars can be found if you search for antirrhinum rust-resistant seeds in any well-known seed catalogue. But bear in mind, fully resistant cultivars haven't been developed yet. But hey, I'm a plant scientist, maybe one day I'll work on it. Step 2. The second step to prevent your snapdragons from catching antirrhinum rust fungus is to stay on top of garden hygiene. The dusty brown fungal spores which we saw earlier travel readily on the wind, which you can't do much about. But the spores also hitch a ride on plant materials, tools, clothing and your hands. To reduce the chance of you spreading the antirrhinum rust fungus around your garden, take care to clean and wash anything that has touched infected plants. Keeping clean is particularly important if you have only spotted rust on a few of your plants because you don't want to spread infection to your other healthy snapdragon plants. Step 3. Once an individual snapdragon plant is infected with rust, that plant is almost certainly a lost cause. If you try to pluck off infected leaves, you'll often find the infection is always one step ahead of you. The antirrhinum rust fungus rapidly invades, so there's no point trying to rescue the one plant. So this third step of control is to inspect your snapdragon plants regularly and remove whole infected plants, not just the leaves, as soon as you see them. Remember those yellow patches on the snapdragon leaves which were hard to spot? A pro tip here is to look at the underside or back of the leaves every week or so to catch the infection early. 
you probably agree that those pustules on the back are much easier to spot. You want to uproot and dispose of infected plants as soon as you see them. Unless you have a very thorough composting technique, it's wise to put infected snapdragon plants in your council's green waste collection. Always remember, plant debris and spores can be tenacious survivors of incomplete composting. Step 4. In mild winters, snapdragons can survive as a short-lived perennial. However, in their second year, these snapdragon plants often more quickly fall victim to rust infections. The fourth control step is therefore to remove all older snapdragon plants, healthy or otherwise, in the autumn. This means that you want to start from scratch and plant new snapdragons every year from seed or small plants you've purchased in the spring. Remember to choose those rust-resistant snapdragon cultivars I talked about in step one. Step five. The fifth and final step is to improve the growing environment as much as you can to reduce the growth of the fungus. For example, when you plant your snapdragons, you'll probably need slightly wider spacing than you initially think, so don't crowd them. Improving airflow and keeping distance around your snapdragon plants allows the plants to dry quicker after rain, which decreases fungal growth. Remember, you can't control the rain, but you can keep the leaves as dry as possible. Try to only water the soil below the plant. So those were my five steps to control Antirrhinum rust fungus infection. If you want to know more about the science behind the Antirrhinum rust fungus, I've added some links to the scientific papers below. Now you can feel confident in diagnosing rust on your snapdragons and taking action to reduce infection in future years. If you found this video useful, please do subscribe to my channel so you can keep on top of my new videos about growing healthy plants. Wishing you healthy plants and happy gardening.